from University of Houston downtown. Well, thank you all uh, for your patience. And I'm so happy to see that you're interested in online learning. And uh, I'm hoping maybe use Blackboard uh, Learning Management System. So I'm Mary Jo Parker. I'm a, a faculty member in the Natural Science Department. I do teach online uh, non-majors biology, but I'm also an executive director of a, a, an academic unit called the Scholars Academy in the College of Science and Technology. And I won't be speaking about the Scholars Academy today, uh, just the course that I'm talking about. So today what I want to let you know that we're going to look at, we're going to look at the uh, learning management system. It does have uh, in integrated uh, analytics with it that could help you with student success uh, as an instructor or if, you ha if you're a president or otherwise and you want to move your faculty to look at another, another way of understanding uh, redesign of a course or, or student success, then this would help you. Um, and so I'll talk about the goal of our, this particular project. Uh, I do have a paper published on this and I'll share with, uh, with you where you can find it later. Uh, how to support learning uh, with a performance dashboard that's also a part of uh, Blackboard learning analytics, elements of uh, sample Blackboards for my own course, uh, not current course but a course several years ago and then conclusions and questions and answers and certainly I'll entertain questions as we go along. Um, I want to say that I uh, have been uh, teaching the, the online non-majors course for uh, gosh about 12 semesters since 2011 and I was one of the first ones that uh, put together the online. Uh, even though it's a non-majors course it does inform uh, success or failure of the serve as a service course meaning every uh, non-major uh, which is over uh, 13,000 at our university so it's an important course and like every online uh, course you know we really have trouble with ensuring the success of students in that particular course so A's B's and C's are what you're measuring success by uh, we also have the core components uh, for core competencies for the state of Texas and uh, it's very difficult uh, we can't keep putting things on our plate and we don't take anything off and the online environment to get them connected is, is uh, offers some difficulty you heard in the first session this morning one of the track winners uh, talking about uh, presence in the online or virtual environment. So uh, University of Houston is uh, the third uh, largest uh, city in the U.S. Uh, and technically we're a Hispanic serving and a, a minority serving institution. So already we know that our students may come with some gaps from the high school and or from the community college, uh, but they're coming. And then 61% uh, uh, are actually need-based. So we have, we're financially needy and uh, we're definitely economically disadvantaged at our campus. Your, your campuses may look very much like ours. 70%, uh, over 70% are first generation students. In my uh, small academic program, 200 students that are STEM majors, science, technology, engineering, math and computer science we have over 76 percent that are first generation uh, so you're talking about students that really need support because they don't have experience of university life at home uh, we we don't have residential halls so we are what we call a commuter school but we we do uh, offer uh, places where they can stay with us we find if they stay longer uh, they get more done and they feel more connected and of course the challenge in the online environment uh, is to make them feel connected to a, a professor that that may only check email once a day I'll share with you what I do uh, the core components that we're responsible for in this uh, non majors course include teamwork critical thinking and quantitative reasoning and there are, uh, there's oral communication, we're not assessing that one quite yet, but it is coming, I, I know. 
Uh, and then finally, um, when you look at um, the AACU uh, survey groups, uh, you know, higher ed has to determine how we are, are producing a, a high quality citizen, uh, technologically advanced citizen for the workplace in the future. So uh, the, the question and the 21st century is upon us. So, uh, so learning mm -hmm. analytic, now how many of you use Blackboard? Anybody? Okay, if you don't use Blackboard, then I would suggest to you uh, Moodle or Canvas or, <clears throat> excuse me, Desire to Learn. Uh, I cannot say with certainty that they have analytics, but most learning management systems do collect data, so you just need to seek it out. Um, <clears throat> the reason I'm giving the talk, uh, we have er first, uh, first alert, early alert systems external to the learning management system. And uh, I got disturbed because I have to leave my learning management system in order to try to uh, share with the advisors that they, they need to help my students. And so I began to look into uh, uh, Blackboard Learn, and sure enough, in the performance reports, there's more than just performance. So performance is a little uh, nondescript in terms of what they are giving you to do with your, with your course. Uh, so anyway, this is a way that you could uh, look at personalizing learning uh, because you're aware of the, the trends uh, that each individual student has for themselves. And then there are tools that can be accessed by the individual learners. So the analytics, uh, you know, that's a big, uh, it's a big uh, emphasis nowadays. Uh, most people, because of big data sources, uh, hospitals and researchers are looking at how do we, um, which data is important, which data gives us trends that are important to us to know. And so this is one place where uh, university professors or instructors, if you're using, if you're in the high school level and you're using Blackboard, of course it same stands true that you could use it there. But it, it's not, oh, pardon me, I'm trying to get my pointer. Can you see the pointer? No, you cannot. Okay, well, it's a teaching tool. It's a, it helps you form instructional strategy. I'll show you a couple of examples uh, of the dashboard that could help you with that. And then absolutely, it's a course design tool. You know, if you're offering uh, online hours at a certain time of day, uh, but you've not informed yourself as to when your students are actually in the course, then you're kind of wasting your time they're not going to be there, right? So, so you're meeting the policy that you have to offer online hours, but they're not there. So, you know, without helping them, we, the policy doesn't really help us, right? And then uh, Whitmer in 2007 wrote an article about course design and what we have to worry about, building blocks, supplemental areas for content, so what does a good online course have to have? And he outlines all of that. And of course, the now I do have another article, and maybe next year I'll do this one, where I talk about how to bring uh, more, group, more group interactions through the, uh, to increase teamwork through the group setting in Blackboard. Uh, and then they have the evalu evaluative area. Finally, the peer-to-peer uh, -peer interaction can be measured as well. How, how much are they using it? Who's using it? Who's talking to the other person? But again, that was not an, okay, so where in Blackboard would I find these analytic tools? And quite honestly, if you look under evaluation, uh, course reports, I'll show you what that does. Performance dashboard, I'll show you for an actual class what it looks like. Retention center, and then the SCORM reports. And I will say to you, now my classes run about 40, 40 to 45, you know, because after 25, in an online environment, you might as well have 100, quite honestly, because it's, it's, it's just easy. It's a little easier. It's more grading, but a little easier to run a class that size. Um, so let's see, uh, what does the dashboard tell us? 
In this case, it's going to give us the vital stats for every student the last time they access the course, which seems like a trite piece of information, a trite piece of data, but it's really important. Uh, the last, how many days since they last accessed it, really important. You know, if you haven't seen any work coming through, you want to catch that early. If you don't need an early, this is your early alert, but to you, not you giving it to a counselor. But you got to be looking at it. Discussion board participation. Uh, if they're not talking to each other in a written form, and I also use uh, oral discussion threads with voice thread, then you know that they're not participating. And then finally, the retention center information. So that's pretty much the dashboard that uh, Blackboard Analytics has. Okay, so what, and I apologize, it's very small, but I'll just kind of come over here since my pointer, you can't see it. So uh, it will give you their important data. It'll give you the last day, last, uh, how many days since they last checked in. You know, these are who I'm worrying about. This one was in there one day ago, three days ago. So that's a week. They're within the week of the, the module, uh, but who's not doing anything? And then um, look at adaptive releases. If you have any, it would give you that information. I particularly don't. Uh, discussion board, so you can see how free, well, of course, I set them all up, so I'm in there. But you can see who's attending to the discussion threads. And the discussion threads, for me, they're a way <clears throat> of talking about the content peer-to-peer. -peer. So I put a thread out that uh, keys on a particular concept from that module. And remember, for non-majors, they're not majors, so we don't need depth. We do need understanding, but across a, a broader landscape. Uh, so this will tell you if they're communicating with each other. It also tells you if they are communicating with each other with the, within the Blackboard discussion group, they're, fee they're be beginning to feel more attached, right? They're beginning to look at who writes what type of thread and response. And then I kind of help them to give them an example of a good thread response and a thread response that's congratulatory which adds nothing to the discussion of the content and really this is an act of paraphrasing so this gives you a lot of information and then finally um, you can customize the retention center and then you can look at their individual grades so that's a quick dashboard uh, the retention center is very interesting who has the blackboard again who has used these tools Okay, great, some of you have, wonderful. So um, again, it, you can look at at-risk at behaviors for every student, missing the deadlines, those typical research-based behaviors that we already know make an impact on whether they're gonna succeed or fail, grade alerts, so it will tell you, are they below, how far below a passing grade are they, activity alerts, meaning are they even participating in the course, and then finally, the access, the access al alert. So actually, if you wanted to, you could look at the retention center and look at the access alerts, <clears throat> and you could create a mind map of how this individual person, this student, is approaching the course. Are they going first to the quiz? Are they reading? Are they, it's an, an e-text. What are they doing first? to get an idea of are they successful or not? Or will they be successful? Okay, so what does the retention center look like? So this is an individual example of the retention center. And again, I apologize, it's very small, uh, but it's a large amount of information. So it will tell you how many deadlines have been missed, how many days missed are they? It will tell you what their grade is. It will tell you, are they above or below average in terms of that entire course, uh, individuals, and then it will tell you access. It's been five days since this, I did cover her name up, not that you'd know her, but still, uh, you don't want to give that information. So it, here also, I think this is very interesting. Uh, 
So if you have sent messages to the student about something, it will show up here on the alerts. If they have responded back to you, it will show up here. I, I find it, I think it's important that we understand that we need to be alerting. So our camp, your campuses might have your own alert system external to the learning management. But it's important, that, I mean, you know, it's analytics. If they wanted to see, are you communicating? Are you entering? You're in this as an instructor. They can, I mean, not that they would, because I'm sure they're very trusting of you as a professor, but they can check you as an instructor. You can check the students. So I think it <coughs> behooves us to be aware of that. Now, personally, I'm going to get in because I think good instruction is I'm in there maybe four times during the day and then I'm at night in there checking to see if they need me and if it's really urgent they're going to email my my um, university email I try to keep all of my information all of my chats inside the learning management system and I'll tell you why because data analytics again you have a record of what went on between you and the student. If they email you through your university email, you, you have to go search for all of that. So you can connect uh, information from here to their grade. You know, I, I had one time, uh, this was uh, maybe two years ago, uh, an individual student uh, dropped and said she wanted her money back because she hadn't done any work and yet I went in here at, well they're asking me Dr. Parker did she do work and so we have a third party we use uh, McGraw Hill Connect also but we went in I went in here and pulled the analytics for the student and pulled the connect and she had done almost two modules and I said look she she would be considered well in attendance of this course so, you know, I don't think she needs the money back. She might need it, but I don't think she should get it because she had said, no, I hadn't done anything. Okay, so then here's a large view, and again, apologies, it's so small, retention center. So uh, over here it says uh, students at risk. So it will give you a quick uh, who's not attending, who's got low uh, grades in the course, uh, are there activity alerts? Are there access alerts? So it will tell you at a quick glance who you need to worry about. Now, as a veteran instructor, you probably are aware, but this really quantifies for you how many. You know, where are my DFWs going to come from and who do I need to worry about? We need to worry about everybody, of course, but the DFWs are absolutely important. And then here, it will tell you what kind of course activity they're engaging in. So over here was assessment. Uh, those, that has to do with what assignments were um, uploaded. Uh, interaction and collaboration. So if you have discussion boards, blogs, journals, groups. Now we use groups to assess teamwork. And so that's, that's going to be a big one for us. And then uh, learner support, announcements, and other items that you might give them. Uh, but all in one place for every student that is at risk. And then uh, when, you do, when you run course reports, now these are, um, they're large and they take a little while to run, but they're very helpful. You can get them in PDFs, any of these reports. When you run them, you choose. Do you want CVS, uh, comma, separated va CSV, comma, separated value, which you can turn into an Excel spreadsheet, or do you want PDFs, or do you want Word? So you get to choose what, what kind of format you want this in. Uh, but the analytic areas that it will give you will be the activity within the content area. And I think that's really important as an instructor so if you have set up your content area, for example, you want, them, you want a, an overview of the uh, module. You want them to read these assignments. You want them, so as an instructor, you have guided the process for them. 
you want them to do uh, lab activities. So we do have lab activities, simulated, virtual, and we also have home labs. And then you want them to then look at the connect, look at the learn smart, the adaptive learning, and then look at the quiz, right? And then finally, you want them to take the, take the quiz, right? And when you look at the activity, uh, in, the act, in the activity, in the content areas, you will see they're all over the place. They have no approach whatsoever. So then at that point, early in the course, you can send emails or announcements that say, here's, the, here's a better order for all of you to think about doing. Now, not that every learner is the same, but you can inform what might help them do better in the course. And really, it's our obligation to do that. Uh, we as, even if the, even though they're they're higher <coughs> ed students, uh, not everybody comes equipped. So they learn how to learn, and they didn't get that in high school, really, right? They didn't read in high school because they could still make a good grade without reading. So you've got to help them a lot. Now, technically, non-majors bio is a considered a core course because it's freshman level, but quite honestly. We see many junior seniors about to graduate. We kept it to the end. And this, I'm very troubled when I see other majors that do not know how to study, do not have an approach to their learning, and they're about to leave us as a university. Okay, then you have course activity, look at the total time, and look at the amount and type of activity. Total time is really informative so I I believe that looking at the overview and looking at the reading assignments is important that that's my philosophy but when I see how much time they have in those areas I really have to inform myself and say maybe I need to approach this a little bit differently right maybe I need to just just put the reading do they really now, now instructional design good instructional design would say oh yeah she must outline what they're going to do but but when you see where they start they do not see it as important and maybe we need to honor even though I'm saying they don't come with everything they need to to know maybe we need to honor that this is how they learn and if you see across the board in a class that everybody's starting here as opposed to where you intended them to start, well then maybe you need to change how you're uh, creating that course. And then uh, you, the coverage report, uh, you know, if you have goals included, how that's looking, uh, single student performance against the goals, uh, good for assessment, and then certainly the activity by dates, times, and day of week. Now this is very important. I had a professor that I worked with. She did anatomy and physiology hybrid, but her online section, she said to me, oh, I don't, I don't look at anything on the weekend. And I don't grade and I don't communicate with them on the weekend. And I said, oh my goodness, you know, I have a module set up for seven days with assignments due Sunday night at midnight, right? That's typical. And the reason, we have 60% um, non-traditional students. They're working. They barely have time to get in the weekend because they have families, they have other. And I said, how can you do that? And so, I, you know, when she made that statement, I went and looked at mine. And quite on, I'll show you a couple in just a minute. Quite honestly, most of the activity is on the weekends. And so you have to, so then I asked myself, okay, best practice is I, I want you to spread it out over a course of seven days, but if, if in reality they're only taking the weekend, then I need to maybe change my course to meet that need, still getting the level of information that I want, like content information. Okay, and then single course participation report for every student. You can see what they do individually. Uh, a user a single a student overview for single course and then uh, the activity in the forums and groups okay so a course report 
under uh, this is under your tabs of evaluation so you can select user activity and size course uh, content areas or course activity overview so there you're looking at the you kind of backed away and look at the big picture of the entire course what are they doing where are they really going you know if you have a certain sequence set up and they're not using it you need to adjust or it could inform you to adjust uh, course coverage uh, meaning you're looking at the goals and the gaps that are there course performance of course this is important so goals and and grades and then summary of the individual user activity so you select here's some more I mean there's a lot of information that you can pull uh, single course user participant report so for for one student let's say that you have how many minutes did you give me a 10 minute okay so for for one student you can pull what is what is that student doing over the course of the whole uh, online experience right and then finally um, student overview of the single course um, user activity and user activity in groups so okay let's see so to run the report it's very easy you just select it pick the report and get you have to give them the dates that you want because they you know if you use blackboard over a series of semesters they're oh my what did I do okay I'm we're better <laughs> thank you uh, okay so here's an example I've run a student overview for a single course and so you can see well I don't know who this this is a good student of course I would give you a good student I do have a poor student in a minute but anyway so look at this so we start the week Monday and they're they're working and then middle of the week it just absolutely drops off even Saturday right that's four hours and then Sunday they're doing all day they're working all day to catch up so it's typical but I think it's important even though we know this is happening looking at the data right we have uh, a lot of adjuncts and so the full-timers that do the non-manager biology courses we have to be together to inform the adjuncts what you must do you know adjuncts may go to four or five universities where everything is different at each you know okay uh, so anyway here it will give you look how many hours this person has been in the course 40 hours this is early I think in the semester and then average time per day 13 hours okay logins now here's the other thing you know they can trick you and say oh I'm I'm in the course I'm working because they're logging in and they'll log in and never log out right and so it will show lots of time but so you got to dig a little bit deeper to see what they're doing all right here's another example this is for one student what they did and when they did it and how much time was spent doing that particular right so I can look at this student and say oh they're reading the articles uh, that was actually a lab and they turned in the lab and they're doing other you know and look here they're taking the connect quiz that's a paired to the third party but the grades come in so you'll see that and this was in the summer actually so you know that's a very rapid it's less than it's they say five weeks of, no it's not it's less than four quite honestly so very good information okay activity and use now I use this for uh, another a different paper that I wrote on teamwork how do you build teamwork within that group setting uh, in blackboard and so you can see within the groups uh, you'd have to actually inform yourself as to who the group people are right so this will tell you group whatever group whatever and who is participating so that when they do their assessment and we use the uh, AACU value rubrics when they do their assessment in the group if they say oh everybody participated right they're rating themselves but then we actually add for them to rate their students one minute five minutes oh I'm sorry five minutes okay I'm almost done okay and then here's course activity so now this is very important so 
when you look at the individual student, it could be a little uh, skewed, right? You have a good student, you have a poor student. But then when you look across the course, so look at this. Man, they start with good intentions. They want to finish, right? And then life happens, and what is with Thursday? Something. Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. And, and actually, overall, look at this, the whole, across the whole course. Now, it's early in the course when I did this, but they're really not working on Sunday very much. So that one girl who worked how many hours it is really not the average of what's going on. So for me, this would be very, this would make me change when I say things are due, when I give a sample schedule, because I do give them a sample schedule. And the only reason, I will tell you this story, the only reason I, I give a due date per week, per module, is because I had taught, uh, before I started this, before I made this course online, I was an adjunct for Sam Houston State University doing a graduate course online. And that professor had, I, you know, had to use everything she had. She had no pacing chart. Everything was due at the end of the semester. And I said, holy moly, I will never, I would never do that on a course I had for my own. So anyway, but I have backed off a little bit. You know, I wanted them. I have some professors with, in this uh, group that I'm in now, they will have things due every day. And to me, that is too high school like right these are working adults generally so they're not going to have that kind of time okay then you can look at the overview of when this how many hours the students spent on whatever uh, here you can look at the activity in the forums so this would tell you I don't particularly like the pie chart but this is what they have that will tell you what it is they did and how many minutes uh, or activity who participated in that uh, finally, this is just another way to look at who's doing what. We do use Zoom for our office hours uh, online. And then, okay, conclusion. So, well, I think, it, I think it, it's nice to know that it, the analytics are integrated into the Blackboard. I think, it's, I think not everybody knows this, and I think that um, we're in a data age and we need to use the data that's very easy, easily accessible to us as instructors. If you're a, a chair, then here's a way to move your uh, colleagues, if that's the case. Or if you're in teacher uh, professional development, we need to be teaching this instead of, I think sometimes we get caught up in looking for a new piece of software and yet we don't really know the pieces of software that we have. Uh, I think we can really uh, find data that can inform how we can get students to deeper understanding uh, by where we present, by when we present, when it's due, when it's due and knowing what they're doing and then uh, offer insight into the layout. I mean, I think this is really critical. How does your, how do you set up your due dates and your sequencing of information? You know, I think this will inform you, the dashboard would inform you. And then finally, uh, you know, if you're gonna redesign, begin with the data analytics in mind, right? And then and let it inform what how you change that course. And I have redesigned this course many, oh gosh, I would say maybe five times. One for many master, one was for, for many reasons. And until I started looking at the analytics, and I knew they were there, but really didn't use them. I didn't have time to use them. Now, now I'm going to change the course based on when they do the work. And I, you know, some of the things that I used to have required, I have made optional, and they're going to them, ironically. They're going to them of their own free will because they understand I have to practice the information. Okay, well that's the presentation. I hope you found something of interest. And uh, you know, I have a few cards up here if you want more information. Uh,
it, it, anybody at Tech Lib, Tech Lib, you can find my my published article. It's from the AACE. Okay, well, you all have a great day and get to your break. Get to your break. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>